More reaction now to the fact that ministers say they will force builders to pay to remove unsafe cladding from low-rise buildings in England. The Housing Secretary, Michael Gove, told MPs innocent leaseholders must not shoulder what he called a desperately unfair burden. And he warned developers he could use legislation to make them pick up the bill. David O'Leary is Policy Director at the Home Builders Federation. Or is it the House Builders Federation, Mr O'Leary? Home Builders Federation, yeah. And, and tell us the kind of companies that you represent. Uh, our members are uh, UK home builders uh, from the very largest home builders in the country down to um, you know, very small SMEs. So we represent the whole industry. So when you hear the Housing Secretary, Michael Gove, saying we will come for you, how do you react? Well, I, one thing is for sure today is that we, we really welcome a bit more clarity and that the, the, this, after a long time, is now moving forward again. Um, we recognise as an industry that we have a part to play in the solution and we certainly agree with the principle that leaseholders should not pick up the bill uh, for the, any remediation that's needed. Um, but you know, we are very keen that this, this debate and this discussion in, it is broadened out. Um, the industry, the home building industry has already contributed a, around about a billion pounds. Uh, we are also paying a new residential property developer tax uh, payable from this year, which will raise another two billion pounds. And then there's the building safety levy on future developments as well that will raise even more, uh, all to help remediate um, buildings where that is necessary. So at this stage, we would hope that other actors and other trades and industries will be brought into the discussion because uh, I think yeah, we, we need a solution and we need it fairly quickly. You mean manufacturers of cladding or manufacturers of insulation? Yeah, I think there's a, there's, you know, we, the, the sums involved will require, um, you know, contributions from throughout the industry and throughout those who have played a part in this. But it was but just, just to, sorry to interrupt, Mr. O'Leary, but it was the developers who bought the defective insulation, the, the, the rubbishy cladding that was flammable. I think we've all we've all learned over the last four years that we were reliant on uh, systems and regulations um, and product uh, testing and accreditation that probably hasn't uh, uh, stood the test of time. Um, so yeah, all of those buildings that have been built in the past were built in good faith using materials that were uh, accredited as being what they said they were accredited for and according to building regulations. Um, so there is clearly some issue, there is clearly a massive issue here and we need to remediate uh, a number of buildings. It's worth saying that developers, the large uh, UK home builders have already uh, uh, assigned huge amounts of money to try and set, to, to try and remediate buildings where they themselves have historically had an interest. Uh, what we're talking about today is trying to find a solution where there is no developer because they've either gone bust in the past or because they were built by overseas developers and they never really existed in this country in the first place. We need to find something that will satisfy leaseholders in that position as well. And we're up for the conversation with government, but it does need to be a broader conversation than just home builders. Right. Well, I, I listened to Michael Gove in the House of Commons today. I mean, he did not talk about insulation manufacturers or cladding manufacturers. It was about developers. It was about builders. And he said he will use planning powers or the tax system to make builders pay to come up with this four billion uh, or, or legislation or restricting access to government funding and future procur procurements. Yeah, and we fully uh, recognise that uh, being as uh, most home builders, well, all of our members are UK headquartered and pay taxes here. But, uh, we're a relatively easy target for 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 this uh, funding, um, but we would like to see a broader discussion. Right, but um, you, but forgive me for interrupting here. I mean, your your members are loaded. I mean, you get you earn billions in profit, which is fine. That's what you're in it for. You're not a charity. I get that. But you absolutely, your members can afford this. Well, the industry has uh, the largest home builders have performed well over the last few years. It's obviously not that long ago uh, when uh, things were very different uh, back at the start of the last decade, and you know we, the turnaround since then has been enormous and that's been partly down to the fact that those developers 
to the largest builders are responsible overwhelmingly for the doubling of housing supply that we've seen over the past seven or eight years. Yeah, so and, and, and they've earned money from it. So good for them, but they can afford it is my point. Yeah, and uh, they, they, they have uh, made uh, profits in the last few years, much of which has been reinvested into future housing delivery and more new land and labour to build those homes of the future. So there is an appetite. Those developers have grown um, substantially over the past seven or eight years and have an appetite to grow even more over the next few years uh, by building even more homes. Um, you know, clearly this money will need to come from somewhere and we, we need to have the conversation with the government. It's very early days, but we need to have the conversation about you know, what can be, what we can work on together and with other sectors as well. You talked about some of the bigger house builders have already said they will pay. For example, Taylor Wimpy have already promised to foot the bill for issues at, at their developments, at their buildings. Reputationally and morally, it's just the right thing to do, isn't it? I mean, do you need any more discussions? Well, no, and that, I think this is this is the point that today we're, we're really trying to find solutions where those buildings have not been developed by um, large UK-based house builders, but where perhaps the developer no longer exists or, or you know, where it's hard to track them down. And I, I appreciate that the government is going to spend some time and considerable efforts to um, try to track down uh, responsible persons where that, that might not be immediately obvious. For the UK-based house builders, the likes of Taylor Wimpy, as you mentioned, they have um, yeah, done what they consider to be the right thing and we we support them and applaud them for doing that um what we're now trying to do deal with is a, a, a large number of buildings where you know they haven't been developed by um the, the publicly traded large uk house builders so um we again i think we we fully accept that we've got a part to play in this and we'll work with the government constructively okay but it, it's a huge amount of money that the government is looking to find and we need to we need to broaden this discussion. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary.